Now let us see what are the states of attentions are. Either your attention would be a cunning attention. Anything you see, you see from a cunning angle. Many people develop that in an in a, uh, ego-oriented society. And moreover, if you are sort of possessed by cunning boots, then God save you and save others. Like the cunning attention would be that anything you see, you start thinking, what advantage I can take out of this? How much money I can save, you see, it's very, very quick. Uh, it would be cheaper this way. Uh, if I go th by this way, I'll save some time. You see, save pounds, save time, save everything and save your own self. So just to save, you are going on. The attention becomes cunning when you try to save money. Save here, save there, with your own calculations. But if you try to save the money spontaneously, actually there's no nothing to be tried, just it happens that you save. But the cunning attention tries all the time to be smart about things. It argues, it uh, gives explanations. Is it better? These days it's such a cheap, 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 cheap thing that you go mad, really. Like I had a ticket to go to America. I said, don't give me an expensive ticket first class, or I'll go buy a cheap ticket. So they gave me a ticket of such a kind that I would never have come back to London, at least for a year. And I would have lost in that American English, actually, somewhere. So it's so much I've worked out, you know, this into that, into that. That kind of a horrible attention is useless. Leave it, forget it. With that saving also I've not seen anybody becoming rich. Like you want, I want to go and buy some paint. So we will buy some paint, then they think, all right. If we bring it back, then how can we return it? What should we do this time? Nonsense. All the time the mind is on that level. I'll give you an example. The other day, we got some paint to paint the glass. See the subtle sort of it. You see, in the gross there's a subtle indication. And the paint was brought. And then it was worth nothing, ATP or something, all right. I mean, I can afford it. So that's why I bought. If you can't afford, don't buy. So they said, now we should return. I said, but why? Now it's come out, now go and return. You spend so much petrol going there. If you want to calculate also, it's stupid and the time will be wasted. No, but mother, you see, ultimately we save 2p. <laughs> <laughs> I said, all right, now I'll save a lot of money, now I'll show you how. I took that paint and painted many things which looked like glass or which was stone-like, this, and the whole thing looked so beautiful. So the mind that is destructive is only calculating. If you have such a mind, know yourself that you have to get rid of that kind of a calculation. Cheap, 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 cheap things you should just give. Just keep in the set. You should not be, of course, overindulgent, but you should not be also going for all the time for this kind of a calculation because you are wasting your important, awakened attention which very few people have in this world. Must know that you are realized souls, you are not ordinary, mundane type of people. You are special people and you are not to waste your attention in useless calculating money, P and this and that. Let's go ahead, what happens? Let's see. I never calculate, you know that, but I live very cheaply. And you can also do that. This attention, cunning attention, is also very fussy attention. Here it starts saving money. And then 
there it is in the evening, it must drink. So all the saving of pee, 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 pee goes into the uh, gutters of drink. Just seen, the sum total of such a personality is what? So this mentality has to be controlled, especially for ego-oriented people are extremely calculating, most surprising it is. But the people like Indians who are not calculating are not so rich. They are very generous, they always have money for Sahaja Yoga. I've had never a problem of money with them, never. Because they are not so calculating to them to do for others, not for yourself, but for others, to spend for others. If they have come to our house, all right, open your heart. Now this is the time to spend, not for drinking and self-indulgence, but for the indulgence of doing for others. That's their practice and tradition. So in this respect you have to take to that tradition. Oh, they have come, let's spend now. What can we do? This is the main thing one should understand. Those who are mostly self-indulgent are extremely miserly people. So the attention which is cunning is the worst attention because, you see, cunningness also cheats yourself. It is cunning with you. And you think, oh, I've been smart enough, you see, I've saved two people. But you have lost your soul. You are no more a surgeon. I'll give you an example. <laughs> I told somebody that keep the van down there go by train, this van seems to be <laughs> a horrible van. <laughs> and there was a lot of, a, you see, explanation with both the fingers going on like this to me, you see. And I got so fed up with the bombshells coming on me <laughs> that I said to go. And the thing fell. And the thing got spoilt or whatever it is, is out of order now. So they had to do what I was telling them. Without the bombshell, if they had listened to me, it would have been all right. <coughs> so your attention should not be on saving material things and uh, worldly things and all that, but attention itself must be saved. Ask a question, where is my attention? I've seen in the program, some people are concentratedly listening to me, but some people cannot. Some are concentrated for a short while and some get disinterested after some time. Some are looking there, some are looking there. So how much attention you have saved is the only concern of a Sahaja Yogi. Forget about others, they are all garbage cleaners, you see. Forget about others who are not seeking, who are not of your quality, but you are a quality. Now what do you have to say? For example, somebody is a king. He doesn't bother of two P being saved. I don't know, Baba, these days I can't say, definitely. They must be also doing that kind of a thing, you know. But what is he bothered? To save his grace, to dignity. But for a Sahaja Yogi, the most important thing is you must save your attention. It's called as chitta nirodha, nirodh, saving of your attention. Where is it going? It's such a precious thing for me. <coughs> Where is it running? Then how do you save your attention? It's through concentration. Concentrate, try to concentrate. Don't allow your attention to wobble. Gradually, you will develop concentration. You can watch my photograph, it's the best. Concentrate. <coughs> 
bring it in your heart. Let it be integrated in your heart. You are lucky people. You don't have to build up a photograph and then give it up because it is just a avalambana, means it's just a uh, dependence and then you remove it. It's a complete dependence for you and a load for me of complete joy. So when you are concentrating in Sahaja Yoga, absolutely fully in Sahaja Yoga, <coughs> then you are controlling, saving your attention one. This is one type of people. Then the another type of an attention, what we call, are the people who are sort of take a very negative attitude. The first are the positive, so-called, so-called positive, who are saving money, saving everything. That is useless. Now the second type are the archbishops of all that is disaster, misery, mishaps, this type of an attention. If you read newspaper every morning, you will have an attention like that. All the newspaper people have that kind of an attention to find where is the disaster. I mean, in a sinister way they feel happy there's a disaster. I've seen people, oh, Mother, I came to the seminar, but the problem is, you see, there was no water. The attention is in finding disasters within and without. What happened? There's a disaster. What happened? I lost a pin. <laughs> Absurd to have such stupid ideas. They will cry and weep and we make everyone miserable. Oh, I'm so miserable. What? My husband doesn't talk to me or my child is not with me. Such people are extremely self-indulgent as far as their relationships are concerned. They make everyone like that, oh, the person didn't talk to me nicely, and he was this way and that way. They feel hurt at the slightest touch. And by that they think they are saving their emotions, if not the material thing. Such people are very frightened people to talk to anyone. And anybody says nice things also, they get a friend, like this, they'll frown. The reason is they do not know what they have to save, it's not their emotions at all. There's no need to save your emotions, you are protected. What does it matter if somebody says anything to you, you are above there, nobody can touch you. You are wasting your attention all the time by trying to save your emotions. There's nothing to be frightened of anyone because somebody is going to say something harsh word, that's why you don't want to do something. Such compromising people, so-called, have not understood Sahaja Yoga. There is no compromise in Sahaja Yoga at all. It is just like a diamond. Diamond will remain a diamond, whatever you do, it's forever and ever. It's like that. So one has to understand that the attention should not be allowed to drift into this kind of an indulgence which is of a drunkard, that they are the most miserable people, the drunkards are. Just imagine. They will be always crying, weeping, and people would think they are very miserable. So what you have to save at that time is your attention from such indulgence into useless expression of your fear about your emotions. The third one is a very horrid, idiotic one. The idiotic one comes from the second time where the person is emotionally indulging. 
that is the A of the third. And the B of the third comes from the first type, which is stupid. So we have two types of people, one idiotic and another are stupid. <laughs> but in Indian language there's only one word, especially in Marathi is murkha. They don't, de de for them both categories are the same, as if the circle meets at the same point. I mean, English language in some ways is good, at least it differentiates between the murkhas, like they can be stupid or they can be idiotic, you see. Because of psyche being so confused here that psychologists have brought out, some are schizophrenic, some are idiots, some are stupid, some are donkeys. <laughs> so, this, the third type, is the worst, is most frustrating for me. They'll stick on to me like leeches, they'll be saying stupid things all the time, just can't bear an idiot, isn't it? They can bore a person, I mean all sorts of this put together is called as murkha. So I don't want to analyze it, it's a bit too much. So that kind of an attention you have, then you better keep quiet. Don't talk, just listen to others what they talk, what they say. There are some people who will just go on talking, 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 irrelevantly, uselessly wasting their energy. And such people are always friends of the cunning. The cunning and such people go hand in hand because the cunning, cunning wants to be fooled someone and the fool wants to be befooled. Like a king will have a jester. It's like that, you see, these combinations work out. So for such people, the best thing is to keep quiet, preserve all their attention, all their energies just for cleansing. All this idiosity will pass away very soon if you try to preserve yourself. Don't talk, don't say things which are stupid, which are idiot. Just keep quiet and watch others. Sometimes such people can become very great vehicle of God's power, but if they do not take to stupidity and idiosity, This is the type of people, three types I would say, but the fourth type are the people who lead a life of concentration. I mean, a person who is working very hard, say in the office, is a very remarkably successful person and is this and that and that and that and that, is also very concentrated. Somebody who works very well anywhere with a concentrated mind is concentrated. A housewife who looks after her husband and children is very concentrated. Uh, and a husband who looks after his family and his things very in a concentrated way, they know how to paint well, they know how to do things and their hands are deft and they know everything. But such people can have a very immobile attention, very immobile, like plastic or you can call it uh, uh, like rubber. At the most, to improve on it, we can say, like some of the things I've seen which you use for damp proofing. See? You just apply it, after some time it's just parched into it. They, they just can't get out of it. They just can't. They can't enjoy anything. Unless and until you show them a file, you can't talk to them. You see, if you have to talk to such a person, better take a file before you. And before starting, you put the file. If it is on the file only, they will see. But if you talk, they said, make a file. <laughs> Very parched. And they cannot enjoy life. There's no mobility. They cannot be creative. They can be creative only as far as their style is concerned, but not the creative of the joy. So that kind of concentration is there. Concentrated effort people put in, like there are people who are fanatics, 
They are very concentrated in their effort, extremely. That's how all these religions have spread, like Christianity, Islam, Hinduism and all that, because they had a concentrated effort of fanaticism, concentrated effort. If you read the letters of Paul in the Bible, you will see the concentration of it. You go there and you go there and establish a church and do this and what have you done. And very organized, very systematic, absolutely uh, moving like a belt on a machine. And they all the time have that after effects of that movement. Charlie Chaplin has shown in his picture, Modern Times. I used to enjoy that very much, that used to tie up a belt, you see, standing for about an hour. And then after some time, when he was released of the job, he used to go on like that. <laughs> that kind of an attention. That is concentrated means stuck onto something. It's not that. It's not penetrating. Because if your attention doesn't become by concentration subtler and subtler, then it is not that, but it is getting stuck. And the stuck attention is of no use for Sahaja Yoga. Such people, I do not know, will never be saved perhaps, so-called successful. They'll go with all their badges, everything, and God will say, go back, gentlemen, you are not yet been passed through the customs. There is another organization which works much faster, much smarter way and a very specially efficient thing. So these people will be just stuck people. Now there are fourth type of people which are concentrated. They are intense, deep, they penetrate because they are living minds. They are not dead, parched minds, they have living mind. they penetrate. I watch sometimes, I ask some people, what do you think of a particular person? Immediately I know what they talk. If they just talk in a mundane way, oh, he's a fine person, he's a bad person, this thing, that thing, then I know what it is, very superficial shell. But a person who sees the possibilities and the potentialities of its awakening and the problems a person is facing, then I know that he is the one who has that concentration into the subject. And the subject of Sahaja Yoga requires the maximum, maximum penetration. Because Sahaja Yoga, if you have understood, I don't know if you have understood or you are aware of it or not, but is learned through experience and through nothing else. You have to experience and then believe into it. It is not that what I told you is a conditioning on your mind, nothing. You experience it yourself and learn. But those who have that penetrating intelligence, who have that penetrating love emotions, and those who have that penetrating movement of their understanding, they are the ones who experience, learn, experience, learn, experience, learn. They do not allow their mind to play on them. No, no, no. This mind of mine has got experiences of the past and is based on that. No, I have to take every day a new experience. And that experience must be silenced within me, must be sustained within me, must be conditioned within me. Sahaja Yoga experiences are the good conditionings. How can it be? I have seen it, I have faced it, I have had it. How can it be? But for that also to have the best experiences, first condition is of Ruttambhara, Pragya, where you should be of that level, that you really get those experiences, otherwise you will be just a mundane type of person all the time. And you may live with Me, but you will not have those experiences, you will not have that blissful feeling, nothing, that joy. 
So this penetration starts by your meditation and sustenance of the meditation and the <coughs> samadhi seed sprouting, manifesting the new dimension. This sort of an attention one has to develop by watching the attention, chitta As you watch your money, as you watch your road when you drive, as you watch your child when it is growing, as you watch the beauty of your wife or the care of your husband, all put together, you watch yourself, your attention. Where is it going? Where is it lagging behind? What is happening to my attention? Such people have no problems. You'd be surprised that such people, when they want to do something, it becomes dynamic. They can work it out. Nobody has any problem. And if there is a problem, which you are facing all the time in them, know that there's something wrong with you. Something is wrong with the instrument. If you don't have a tin cutter and you start using a knife to cut a tin, it doesn't work out, then you'll say the tin is something wrong with the tin or something wrong with you. No, the, it's wrong with the instrument and that instrument has to be correct. When the instrument is all right, after all, with all the powers you have, with all the blessings you have and the source of power behind it, everything should work out. It should work out. You have had experiences of things working out. You have had experiences of many of miracles happening before your eyes. But still the attention has not settled down with those experiences. Still gatanubhavas means the old experiences continue, old identifications continue, still continue with that and the filth of that is still on your being. Change everything, become a fresh new person. You are blooming out as a flower and then as a tree and assume your position. Assume your position as the Sahajogi. So this attention must be brought round. You judge yourself, where is your attention? And what is the point of understanding? What is the measure of understanding? It's very simple. I have to be pleased because I am the attention. If I am pleased, then you have done the job. But I cannot be pleased by mundane things, by any arguments with that, but only by your assent. 